Hello everyone. Today our topic is transistor transistor logic TTL. It is one of the most common popular logic families. It is named so because of its dependence on transistor alone to perform basic logic operation. It uses transistors which operates in a saturated mode. It is the fastest among the saturated families. This TTL logic families consist of several subfamilies such as standard TTL, high speed TTL, low power TTL, short key TTL and so on. The difference between various TTL families are in their electrical characteristics. Electrical characteristics such as delay time, power dissipation, switching speed, fan in, fan out, noise margin, which we have already seen in the video of digital characteristics of digital ICs. For a standard propagation delay time is 9 nanosecond and the power dissipation that gate is 10 milliwatt for standard TTL propagation delay time is 9 nanosecond and the power dissipation of gate is 10 milliwatt whenever we say the logic one it means the voltage range is from 2 to 5 volts and whenever we say the logic zero it is from 0 to 0.8 volts the standard TTL gate was the first version in the TTL families <coughs> TTL gate comes in three different types of output configurations. First one, open collector output, totem pole output, and the third one is free state or tri state output. Now, in today's class, we are going to see about the open collector TTL NAND gate. From the circuit diagram, we can see we can see. this a transistor but is having something different that is what I am calling this kind of transistor is multi emitter transistor as we know the basic transistors which we are aware of is a one which is having one one lead each that is base collector and emitter but here in this case of transistor you can observe there is this is base that is collector and this is emitter but there are two emitters which I have named it as A and B. So this kind of configuration is called as multi emitter transistors. Now this multi emitter transistor you can simplify something like this because we know that we are aware of the fact that the transistor nothing but 2 pn junction diode back to back. Now if I have to see analyze this multi emitter transistor with a diode then I can see this is my base this one this is my P this is my N here again the common base P and here it is my N and this part is this now we have to see how this TTL circuit operates and what kind of output is produced at the end for that as we can here for example I have taken only two inputs you are free to take n number of inputs like you may have as I said there is a multiple emitter terminal transistor you can have A, B, C, D and so on definitely the construction of those kind of transistors will be different than that of normal transistor but construction is not our issue today only we have to use that that multiple emitter transistor in our circuit and get our work done okay now here for the sake of simplicity we have taken only two input two emitter transistor now assume that both the inputs this a and b are the one through which i'm going to apply my input when both the inputs are 1 1 when both the inputs are 1 1 what will be the state of your q1 
when both the inputs are 1 1 let us say we will start with 0 ok fine no problem we will start with 1 1 when both the inputs are 1 1 can I say can I say my q1 is of y because I can see 1 is connected to n that means positive is connected to negative which makes the base of this which makes this q1 transistor off when this this is off when this q1 is off what about q2 and q3 when this is off that means can i say this there is a sufficient amount of voltage will be away is available at the base of your q2 which makes my q2 on when q2 is on that means it is a short circuit due to which enough voltage is present across the base of q3 which makes the q3 on and therefore my output will be a zero so what did i say when you have both the inputs are one one this q1 is off when q1 is off q2 is on when q2 is on q3 is on when q3 is on entire voltage goes to the ground and the output will be zero okay now let us say both the inputs are zero zero when both the inputs are zero zero a and b are zero zero that means my q1 is on when q1 is on obviously q2 will be off when q2 is off no sufficient voltage available at the base of q3 therefore q3 off when q3 off it is open circuit this is open circuit so what my output will be output will be connecting to the vcc it means vcc will be appeared at the output y therefore it is one now same way you can go for the other combinations like 0 1 and 1 0 in either case we find that your q1 will be always on and because of q1 is on q2 and q3 are off respectively and therefore the output is connected to VCC and it is high. So from this it confirms by seeing this we can say that this gives the functionality of your LAN gate. <coughs> we know that as we are calling this name as an open collector TTL gate because this open collector TTL gate will operate without any external resistors when we are connecting to the input of other TTL gates. These open co collector gates are used in three major operations. First, driving a lamp or relay, programming wired logic, sorry, performing wired logic and in the third case also we can have like construction of common bus systems. In the next class, we will see the totem pole output wherein we will be having some modifications to this basic circuit of TTL open collector. Till then, 